everyone, it's Judy from Field and Forest Projects and today we're talking about how to make your very own oyster mushroom grow blocks. Now typically you purchase something like this as a component of an indoor growing kit, something like our tabletop farms. Otherwise, folks will purchase them in bulk quantity for commercial mushroom production. However, you can make these at home with the right ingredients. Just as a point of clarification, ready to fruit blocks that you purchased from us are grown out in a clean controlled environment onto sterilized substrate. This oftentimes leads to a very low contamination rate as well as slightly higher yields. That being said, you can use a low tech method at home and still get pretty impressive results. Here's what you'll need. Autoclavable bags with a filter patch, oyster mushroom grain spawn, a substrate mix, we'll go into this more in a second, water, a measuring cup, and something in which to boil water. More about the mix. For most indoor mushroom cultivation, growers use a sterilized sawdust based substrate mixed with other supplementation that's suited for each individual mushroom. The supplementation provides extra nutrition for the mushroom to be able to thrive. The exact mix will differ with each individual mushroom species. For example, lion's mane doesn't like as much nutrition as oysters, so the mix will be different for each mushroom. We have a video of the same process for lion's mane, which is linked below in the comments if you're interested. Today we're using a mix of hardwood fuel pellets, the sawdust mixture, pelletized cottonseed hulls, and pelletized soy hulls. A lot of folks use a 50-50 hardwood fuel pellet to soy hull mix for the oyster mushroom production but we've found that for this low-tech method, you'll get better yields with the addition of cottonseed hulls. We also provide all of this in a DIY oyster block kit if you're wondering where you can source some of these things. Kit linked below. To begin, you'll want to add your substrate mix to an autoclavable bag. For this mix, we are using two and a half cups of hardwood fuel pellets, one cup of soy hulls, and one and a half cup of cottonseed hulls. While you're measuring out your substrate mix, start boiling your water. Pouring boiling water directly into a plastic bag may sound crazy, but these are polypropylene bags that are made to withstand temperature and pressure of sterilization, which if you do the conversions ends up being somewhere around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So boiling water is just fine. But still, be careful because it's going to be hot. The heat should kill off any superficial contaminants, but keep in mind that this is not a full sterilization process and it won't kill off every possible contaminant that can find its way into the substrate, so it's important to have a clean working environment. Pour 5.5 cups of boiling water into each bag and give it a good shake. It's helpful to tightly roll the top of the bag, locking in air so that there is plenty of room for the substrate to mix. You'll notice that with the addition of the moisture, the pellets have expanded into what looks more like the sawdust you would expect. Fold the bag over to lock in the moisture and prevent any air movement within the bag and let the bag sit for at least 12 hours. You want the substrate to be totally cooled before you add your grain spawn. The following day, you'll want to add your grain spawn to the bags. This is the most sensitive part of the process, so make sure your working space is clean. Measure out a cup and a half of grain spawn and pour it into your substrate bag. Today we're using pink oyster, but as you saw earlier, this method also works great with pohu oyster. This is a four pound unit of grain spawn, which is enough to inoculate eight blocks. Keep in mind that pink oyster mycelium isn't as thick and heavy as other oyster mushrooms, so don't be alarmed if your pink grain spawn doesn't look like other varieties. Take the one and a half cups of grain spawn and pour it into your substrate bag. You'll want to minimize the amount of airborne particles that get into the bag, so try to do this in an area that doesn't have a lot of air movement and don't excessively breathe into the bag or anything. Just like you did the day before, roll up the top of the bag and give the bag a thorough shake to evenly distribute the grain spawn. Rubber band the top of the bag above the white filter patch. The white filter patch is what will allow your mycelium to breathe over the next two weeks as your substrate colonizes. Place your newly inoculated blocks in a place where they'll be out of the way for about 20 days. The time it takes for the blocks to colonize could change depending on the temperature. If you can, aim for temperature around 65 degrees for the incubation stage. Over the next 20 days, you'll see the mycelium start to move through the mixture. 
Again, something like pohu will have a heavier mycelium than pink oyster, so if you do the two varieties side by side, they will look a little bit different. After that two to three week period, your blocks are ready to open. To open, remove the rubber band and roll the bag down to the surface of the block. Flip the block upside down. The weight of the block will hold the excess bag in place. You can also tape the bag in place, but it's not necessary. Cut small X's into the sides of each block. I like to do two X's on the long side of the block and one X on each of the short sides and the top. Place the blocks into an area where you can monitor temperature and humidity. Mini greenhouses work great if you're able to add humidity with a small humidifier as well as introduce some airflow. If possible, keep the fruiting area close to 80% humidity and around 65 to 70 degrees. Within 14 days, you'll start to see pinning at multiple of the cut sites. Once this happens, keep a close eye on the blocks as the mushrooms will develop fast and likely be ready to harvest within several days. Keep the blocks around for a second crop. The blocks will produce subsequent crops, but keep in mind that each crop will get smaller and smaller as the nutrition in the block becomes less readily available. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Happy growing!